Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. I'm Jen and this is Jory with Jen. Thank you so much for joining me today. I want to pay along and forward some information that I believe is invaluable to those of us that are, whether we are seasoned beaters or hobbyists or um, very beginners or you're, you don't even know anything so you are um, a almost a pre-beginner in jewelry making. We're going to talk about beading wire today. This is such an important topic because beading string, beading wire, or bead stringing wire, however you want to say it, is one of the most important parts of our beading, right? Because we can't bead jewelry without it <laughs> if we're doing um, bead stringing, that is. So welcome aboard everybody to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you haven't yet hit that subscribe button, don't forget to hit that subscribe and give me a like thumbs up. Um, okay guys, so we're doing a deep dive into um, beading wire, bead stringing wire today, okay? So this is intended to be for informational purposes, um, a lot of my uh, years of experience and my research and just what I find as a seller and designer of jewelry um, to be very important information. So I hope you guys and, uh, enjoy this and find this to be useful in your jewelry making journey, especially for my beginners. So I'm going to tuck this video when it's done in my Jewelry 101 basic technique and tutorial videos. And I will put a link in the description box below the video um, for that Jewelry 101 playlist where I have a lot of really great information for all of you beginners out there. So you guys, let's jump into talking about beading wire. Um, let's start out by talking about what beading wire is. Beading wire is a material that is basically made up of numerous thin steel pieces of wire that are woven together. And oftentimes they are coated with a thin layer of nylon, and that helps to protect the wire from wear and tear, deterioration, and it gives what the wire a softer, more supple feel. So the nylon coatings are usually clear or they are tinted, as you can see in front of me here. And the reason that you will see the various tints of the nylon coating is because that will help you to better match the color of your wire to whatever you are designing and beading. Maybe match your beads. Okay, so that gives you basic 101 on what beading wire is. Now let's talk about the common manufacturers of wire. The common brands or manufacturers of wire are Tiger Tail, which is right here. This is Tiger Tail. And then we have brands like Beetalon, which I have several in front of me of the Beetalon brand. And then we have uh, brands like uh, manufacturers like Softflex. And there's, of course, also Accuflex, which I think is like, uh, you can find that on like Fire Mountain Gems. And then there is the Flex Right by the beadsmith. So those are some common manufacturers and you can Google uh, bead stringing wire and see that there are many, many, many manufacturers, but these are the most common used in our fashion jewelry. Um, now let's talk about um, another important factor of wire. Wire is typically labeled with two to three separate measurements and each of those measurements describe a separate trait of the wire, okay? So the first thing is the wire diameter. The wire diameter, which is right here, see how this says a 0.015, and this one says 0.018 inch, 0.046 millimeter. Um, this one over here says 0.018 inch, 0.45 millimeter. 
that wire diameter uh, size is what determines the strength of the wire, what beads will fit on the wire, okay? And so hence, the larger the diameter is better for heavier, larger beads, and the smaller the diameter is better for smaller hole beads, like seat beads, or lighter beads. So let's really make sure we understand wire diameter because that's gonna be one of your most important, you know, one of the two most important things that you wanna look for. So in front of me here, I have, let's pick up three, okay? And all three of these right here, right here and right here. So this is a 0.018 inch, 0.015 inch, 0.018 inch again. And then let's see, this is a 0.019 inch. See, it says diameter. Okay. So that again, it determines uh, the diameter that you choose. The larger, so 0.019 inch would take a larger hole bead and a heavier bead. And a 0.015 inch would take a smaller bead and a lighter bead. Okay. The second important measurement is the number of strands. The number of strands basically is because wire is a cable and it's made up of multiple strands of steel wire. Okay. And they're all woven together. Okay. So the larger the number of strands, the more flexible the wire, the smaller number of strands, the softer and less flexible the wire is. Now we're gonna take a deep dive right there because this is the second, in my opinion, most important part of understanding wire. So as you can see in front of me, on the top row here, I have one example of a seven strand and it's right up here and it's a seven strand. And then in this row, I have 19 strand. It says it right at the top here, 19 strand. And then over here in the soft flex brand, it, ha it says, a uh, medium right here, right? And then it'll say all purpose glass, mineral, and metal beads. So medium and the soft flex brand is truly, I believe, equivalent to like a 19 strand. And then down here, we have 49 strand. So in the beta line, it says 49 strand right up here. And in the flex right, it has a 49 right here, a very large 49, and that's by the beadsmith. It says 49 strand nylon coated stainless steel micro wire. Now let's talk about, uh, and up here, by the way, is tiger tail, okay? And tiger tail is less than seven strand, so it is the least flexible. So we really go tiger tail in order of, um, number of strands from least to the most. So it goes tiger tail. And that's why I have them lined up this way, tiger tail. Then seven strand, 19 strand, 49 strand. Okay? Now let's take a real deep dive and discuss that because that, I are, again, as I just said, arguably, in my opinion, is one of the most important parts of picking out your beading wire. So let's talk about Let's go from least to the most. So tiger tail, okay, is gonna be your least flexible, so it's the most stiff, okay, it has the least amount of strands, but it is the most affordable, okay? Oops, and this is a point, is 38 millimeter, which is really like a, you know, right around like, somewhere around like a point oh. 15.016 inch, something like that. Let me pull that way up for you. And as you can see, this tiger tail comes, I bought this in a variety of colors. And so this is really great for matching up my beads and if I'm gonna do like floating or like goddess style and I really want my wire to show through, I have a beautiful um, selection of colors here to choose from on my tiger tail, but it is the, the most stiff wire that I have. So if I'm going to be using heavy beads, this is fantastic. Um, but it is also the most affordable, as I said. But it is also um, kind of the most susceptible to kinking, you know, kind of like the wire kinking. Okay, so that's tiger tail. 
And then we go into the next, which is seven strand. So seven strand wire, you can see it right here. Seven strand is gonna give you good flexibility. It's gonna be softer than tiger tail. It has good kink resistance and good abrasion resistance. It has excellent strength and it's the most affordable after the tiger tail. Seven strand wire I would recommend for beginners um, as you begin because it is also the most you know affordable outside of the tiger tail and it's really good to start practicing um, and you can get like I have a hundred feet here and you can probably get that for around twelve dollars for a hundred feet. Once you get into your wire you'll see what I mean. Wire might be the single most expensive thing that we use to put our jewelry together, it's certainly up in the top three. Wire is not cheap, that is for sure. Definitely um, an investment in wire. And so that's our seven strand. Now going up from there is our 19 strand. And all three of these are a 19 strand and of course, this medium is uh, equivalent to the Beetleon's 19 strand, but it's kind of like a 21 strand, okay? But this is in 0.019 inch diameter, 0.018 inch diameter, and then a 0.015 inch diameter, okay? So now the 19 strand, okay, is softer than the 7 strand. It has excellent flexibility. It has excellent drape, excellent kink resistance, excellent abrasion resistance. So abrasion, when I say that, meaning the wear and tear that your wire is taking, if you're using metal beads or any kind of beads that have any sharp edges or anything on them, um, that's what we talk about. What we, when, when we talk about abrasion resistance, that's what we mean. And it has superior strength and it is affordable. 19 strand, I would say to all your beginning beaters is definitely probably where you want to try to graduate to. It is affordable, okay? But of course, it's more expensive than the seven strand. You know, the seven strand is more expensive than the tiger tail. So I really have, um, you know, in my opinion, that 19 strand is really a really great medium uh, like middle of the road. It's a great wire. It's got really good flexibility. It's very good. It's excellent kink resistance. Um, it's nice and soft. Um, you know, it's affordable. It comes in a slew of finishes and colors. You can even get like uh, 0.925 uh, sterling silver. Um, there's many, many different colors and many different diameter sizes of the wire in the 19. So 19 is a really great middle of the road um, wire to get yourself graduated to. And then of course, the best of all wires <laughs> is down here, the 49 strand. So I've got a 49 strand, it says it right here, and this is a 0.018 inch, it happens to be in satin gold. And then this is the beadsmith, and it's the Flexrite 49 strand. It happens to be in clear, but it's like kind of like a silver. Okay, I also want to point out on the Beadalon brand that, do you see here, it has all these little coils? And it even tells you on here a lot of different um, interesting facts about the wire. But um, something I'll point out before we do the deep dive into the 49 strand, and I give you your list. Um, and then you see the 19 strand, how it kind of has like less coils than the 49. And then the seven strand actually just shows seven strands right there in the little picture. Okay, so Beadalon is uh, one of the, the many brands that actually show the amount of bundle of strands uh, uh, as a photo on their wire. So 49 strand friends, it is the softest wire. It is the most flexible. It is the most maximum drape, the most maximum kink resistance, maximum abrasion resistant. And it is the most superior strength and most expensive.
Okay, so 49 strand is something that I do use quite often. Um, I do sell my uh, jewelry, and so I want to make sure I'm putting out a really good product. And, you know, f the, the number of strands, again, flexibility is very, very important, right? So the more flexible that you're beating jewelry is, the higher quality it looks and feels. The less flexible wire that you're using is going to be more prone to kinking and abrasion, like getting kinks in the wire. And it's going to um, probably not last as long as the 49 strand in terms of the abrasion and just the durability and strength of the wire. Because again, it's only seven strands in, that are coiled together with the nylon coating. And over here, 49 strands, right? So hopefully that makes sense. So 49 strand is really great. It is most certainly the most expensive. Um, you know, I'll go between 19 and 49 with all of my jewelry that I sell, even the jewelry, you know, that I make for myself um, because they're both great options. If you're really looking for a, you know, great, design and a professional finish that I the 19 or 49 strand are great okay so that gives you an idea about the number of strands when it talks about the number of strands on the wire what that means now you understand that so again just to recap tiger tail is the least and 49 strand is the most in terms of price flexibility, durability, so on and so forth. I've got it lined up from the back going forward here towards me from the least to the most, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. There's a third label uh, that is sometimes labeled um, that uh, is another trait, the, the third trait. Um, that is oftentimes, sometimes it is, sometimes it's not, just depends on the brand, it, uh, that they will um, give you a description to describe that trait about the measurement, and it's the pound test. The pound test is probably the least thing you need to worry about. And um, let me see here. Here's an example right here on the beadsmith. Do you see right here where it says 20... 4.6 pound break. So it does show us right here on the label that 24.6 pounds is where the wire will break, even on the 49 strand. Okay, so 20, 24 pounds. Okay, so, you know, not all the wires, you know, have the pound test um, on them. Some of them do, some of them do not. Um, Let's see, the Soft Flex uh, has right here on it, test strength, 26 pounds, okay? So there might, that's, what, that's what some brands do, but the pound test or the break that we just talked about, it's basically the number of pounds a length of beading wire will support before it breaks, okay? That's, it's just that simple, very straightforward. And again, not all brands put it on there and it's the least thing that you really need to be concerned about. Um, the most thing that you need to be concerned about is certainly the sizing of your wire and the strength and durability and flexibility of your wire. So now let's get into how you select your wire. How you would select your wire um, is really based, I think, on really three principles that I apply, in my opinion. So what type of jewelry you're making, meaning are you designing it for yourself or are you going to be selling it? The size of beads that you'll be using is the second thing that I apply um, in my principles. So um, I'm selecting my wire based on what type of jewelry I'm making, what types of beads I am using. And then, of course, what 
am, what is my um, end desire? Okay, with combining those other two elements, am I trying to be more economical um, or am I trying to, you know, not worry about what I'm spending because it's just not a factor for me. I don't care what I spend. I want the best wire. So really all those three elements, you kind of have to mix into the bowl and put them all together. Okay, so your selection of wire, let's talk about selection of wire and break that down a little deeper dive. So you will, for casual jewelry that you're just making for yourself um, and economical, the most economical would certainly be the seven strand and the tiger tail for its durability, it's still strong, and its affordability, okay? So you would be selecting the seven strand or tiger tail based on a casual economic jewelry consideration, but also its affordability and it is durable wire, okay? Your seven strand and your tiger tail. If you want to sell your jewelry, you have higher end design, you're going to consider a 19 or 49 strand wire because it's the most flexible and it has the most maximum drape and the most professional feel and look on the finished product, 19 and 49 strand. So you'll select either 19 or 49 strand if you have higher end design or you are going to be selling your jewelry you will pay more for the wire, but the end product will show. The end result on your product will show in your wire, okay? And now let's talk about one last thing, and then I'm going to do a little demonstration for you, which is sizing. So we talked a little bit about it a minute ago. So we have it, let me break it down for you guys to unconfuse you because it's overwhelming. There are just so many brands and so much selection of wire out there. It can be so overwhelming. And what I mean by that is, for example, you're like, well, wait a minute. Do I buy a 0.015 inch 7 strand or do I buy a 0.015 inch 49 strand? Well, hopefully, if you're following along this video, maybe you're even making notes. I would definitely make notes because I originally, you know, did make notes myself and, you know, it took some time. And once you get the feel for your wire and you start buying wire, you'll find what you like and you'll find what works for you and what you want to buy. And that's the beauty of, of really all things with your jewelry business. So don't be overwhelmed, you know, hang in there, you'll get it and you'll, it'll make sense. It just takes some time to get used to just like anything else. But again, you know, Okay, well, now we know the difference between a 7-strand 0.015-inch and a 49-strand 0.015-inch. And the difference is, remember, the strand, right? The flexibility. The diameter, it's the same. The diameter of the wire for the beads is going to be the same. The strand of wire, as I said in the beginning, I'll reiterate it, in my opinion, one of the single most important things that you are considering when selecting your wire because that's about your durability and your flexibility, right? The strength, the kink resistance, the abrasion, um, the suppleness, the drapeness, all of that is in the strand, 71949, right? Now we're going to talk about sizing, which is the diameter. So again, I have a couple examples in front of you here. I've got 0.015 inch. Okay, I have 0.018 inch, and then let's find, I know I've got it, here it is. Here's a 0.019 inch, 0.019 inch, okay? So that's what, when I'm talking about sizing, we're talking about the diameter of your wire. So for, and this is, you might want to take notes, this is really good information. So 0.010 to 0.015 inch, and I'm sorry I don't have any, well, I do. I have some 0.015 inch in front of me. I don't have anything less than that. I've run out. Um, and I don't use it that often because it's so fine and tiny, 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 right? Tiny wire. Very fine wire. 
um, but you can use it if you're gonna be doing a lot of braiding or sewing beads and a lot of that stack brick work and all that with those tiny beads um, and the Toho beads and all that kind of stuff you see. Um, you can definitely would be using like a 0.012 or 0.013 inch wire for stuff like that. Um, but back to my point. So the sizing, the small beads and seed beads. So small beads, meaning small whole beads like pearls. Some of them have very small beads or seed beads. You can use a 0.010 to a 0.015 inch wire. Okay. The sizing for your medium beads including crystals and the most common beads, more than likely the most common beads that you will use will be your light to medium beads and your medium hole beads, including crystals, which would be a 0.015 inch to a 0.019 inch. And as a matter of fact, it's all the way up to a 0.021 inch, which I also don't have in front of me, but 0.015 inch to 0.0 Two one inch is for light to medium beads, including crystals. Okay, your largest and heaviest beads will need a 0.24 to a 0.036 inch bead, uh, inch wire, 0.024 to 0.036 inch, which is going to be the least common. Um, but if you're using really large, super heavy beads. You're going to want to get, again, that larger diameter wire because, remember, the larger the wire, the more it's going to hold for that pound test, right? So, in conclusion, a 0.010 inch is the very finest of wire, okay? And here's my 0.015, and now I'm going to take a little bit out for an example for you. Okay, and it's in silver, but I hope you can see that, you know, this is a 19 strand, but this is a 0.015 inch diameter, and it is very, very fine. And I use this for tiny seed beads and all my crystals that are really lightweight. I use this very, very often, which is why I have 100 feet of it, right? This 0.019 inch, uh, 0.015 inch 19 strand, excuse me, the 0.015 19 strand a very fine wire, okay, and really great for very delicate work and very light beads. I use this a lot for the stuff like that, okay? And then let's go to the largest one I have, which is a 0.019 inch, and I will show you the difference. And I think you're going to be able to pick it up. So I have... This over here is the 0.019 inch. And look at, I know that you can pick, look at that. Can you pick that up in the camera? Look at the difference here, how this is much thicker. So it's not as fine than my 0.015 inch, right? So you've got a 0.015 inch and a 0.01, let me turn it this way. And a, let me get it like that, a 0.019 inch on the bottom here. And you can definitely see the significant difference. So on the top here, we have a 0.015. On the bottom, we have a 0.019. And you can very clearly make out that this is a much thicker wire, right? And it's not as fine as the 0.015. So the smaller the diameter of wire, the finer. The higher the diameter of wire, the uh, less fine. So 0.01. O inch is the very finest of wires and then all the way up to 0.036 would be the least finest of your wire. Okay, and then the last thing I want to talk about, guys, before we jump into a quick example is the crimps. So when you're picking out your wire, make sure that you're using the same crimps. I do have separate videos up about crimp beads, but 99% of the time you're going to be using a number one or a number two, either a crimp bead or a crimp two. And what's really great about almost, you know, in all of these brands, um, but Beadalon in particular, is they will tell you right on the package that this 0.018 inch wire needs a number one crimp bead or a number two crimp tube. And it shows you a little picture. And then here's another example. Um, 
that was a 0.018 inch. So let's get a 0.015 inch that I thought I had. Here it is. A 0.015 inch is going to be the same. A number one crimp bead or number two crimp tube. And you do need to make sure that you're using the correct crimp tubes or else it will not adhere um, and secure your wire correctly. Um, and you can also Google that, by the way. Uh, what type of crimp tubes do I use with my beading wire? And there's a lot of information out there about it. But, you know, for the most part, if you're using anything between a 0.015 and really a 0.019 inch, you can safely use a number one crimp tube bead, excuse me, a number one crimp bead and a number two crimp tube on your standard wire, which is used the most commonly, which is 0.015 to 0.019 inch. Number one crimp bead, number two crimp tubes, those are gonna fit on the majority of your wire, including the tiger tail, okay? So the average, again, just to wrap that up, the average size wire that is used in fashion jewelry making is 0.015 inch to 0.019 inch, which is why that's what I have out here on display today. Almost all of these will use a number one crimp bead and a number two crimp tube, including the magical crimping beads. Those are uh, two by twos uh, and they're tubes, okay? And so now with that, what I wanted to do was I just have got like, this is the 0.018 inch uh, flex right 49. And again, I just wanted to show you, I mean, you can almost tell, right, how flexible and flimsy, well, not flimsy, but flexible that that wire is. It is the absolute, I love this wire. It is so flexible, but it is so strong and durable. Nothing I am ever make breaks on this wire. And then I wanted to take the seven strand over here, and I wanna show you that you can clearly see that like the seven strand, look at how much stiffer that this wire is, just even the way it's hanging there, then like look at how the 49 strand is almost like limping. So again, just to show you a visual, you know, that seven strand is gonna be your stiffest, least flexible wire, stiffest, and then your most flexible, as you can very well see, is gonna be your 49 strand, okay? And so then I just wanted to show you a couple examples, guys, on various different beads here. I just brought up a couple of things that have, you know, this has got a large hole in it. And this has kind of a, a medium hole. It's a top drilled pearl. And then there is just a charm. And then, like, here is a crystal that has your average little small hole in it. And then here's um, a, a larger, heavier glass bead with a pretty good hole in that bead. And then here is a really cool um, green shell bead. And it's got a very small hole here in the back of the bead. It goes along this way. It's very, very small. And so I just wanted to show you. So whether I'm using my 0.015, which is right here, or my largest wire, which is over here, is my 0.019 inch, okay? So let me get these out of the way. So I have a 0.019 and a 0.015. So a 0.015 inch wire is gonna go through here very, very well. It's going through my hole very well, and there's not a lot of room because it's a tiny little hole. Now, I can probably get the 0.019 inch through it as well. I can. And there's much less movement. So either wire will work, okay? And then let's go over here to the 0.015 inch and get this large hole bead. So there's a very large hole on that bead, as you can see, right? And here's my 0.015 inch. Now, I probably would not put that, even on a 49-strand wire, um, I probably wouldn't put that on a 0.15 because it's just, there's a little bit too much movement in my bead on that wire, right? And it's also heavy, right? So I would probably opt for my 0.019-inch wire because it's thicker, right? And it's also going to accept the, the 
heaviness because it's stronger. And as you can even tell, there's like less movement. It's jiggling around this 0.019 inch less. So the larger hole bead, the larger the wire. Same thing with, let's just grab this crystal. Um, here's a 0.019 inch. It certainly fits through there fine. As you can see, you know, there's a little bit of movement, not much. Let's look at the 0.015 inch wire. And in the 0.015 inch wire, I can absolutely use this, right? Because these are also very, very lightweight little glass crystals. And there's a little bit more movement, but because they're so delicate, you know, I might want to use a finer wire on a little bead like that because they're so lightweight. And when they drape, I want them to drape nicely. And then, of course, we have a pearl. And that's got a nice large hole. I definitely would not use a .015 inch on that one. Uh, it's just there's way too much room with the wire jiggling around that hole. I probably would go probably even to a .021 inch, but even just the .019 inch wire fits in there better. Much, much better. And it accepts the weight of it. It'll also drape nicely because it's nice medium flexibility. So I'd go for a 0.019 inch or higher. So that just gives you a couple of examples. And so listen, guys, I hope you enjoyed that deep dive and education. I'd really been wanting to do this video for a long time. Um, the wire, guys, is the most single most important thing, I argue, you know, um, outside of our tools, you know, that really does lend itself to our finished product, our finished jewelry, how it turns out, whether we're selling it, whether we're just making it for our, ourselves or gifting it, you know, all of those factors come in. I hope you guys enjoyed and found this informational and useful in your jewelry journey. And don't forget to like and share my video. And until next time, friends, be well.